Hello students, this is Mr. Pickett from Earl Warren Junior High School and we're going to teach a little lesson here on how to break the register on the clarinet. With me is uh, Mr. Martin, the band director here at Stone Creek uh, Junior High School. We're kind of out here on the road here. Um, and Mr. Martin, who is the best clarinet player in this district, is going <laughs> to show you how to break the register. Now, if you identify yourself as needing help with the register, we give you two what we call supplemental pages from a book called Best in Class. It's supplemental page 21 and supplemental page 22. Now, we um, are going to play some excerpts from each of those two pages, four exercises on page 21 and four exercises on page 22. So, we'll take a break. We're going to move the camera here so you can see the music and listen to Mr. Martin. And we're going to try and pick up some tips along the way to teach you how to break the register. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Okay, we're going to look first at exercise number 93, clarinet capers. Now this note teaches you the E and it's right at the beginning of the line here. Mr. Martin, could you please play that E and sure. hold it for us please? There's our target note. Now, we're going to start. The exercise starts here. Not here, here. Now, students, be careful. Usually when we teach this exercise, you guys invariably play the second note B natural, but it is B flat, one, two, three, first finger. Now I want you to listen to what Mr. Martin does starting here, because it's a special slurring technique that will help you get these notes. Okay, Mr. Martin, from the beginning of 93, ready? One, two, ready, and go. <laughs> Mr. Martin were in my band. That was beautiful. <laughs> now, did you notice, students, that he uh, held a fermata here and a fermata here? Now, the technique that Mr. Martin used, which he played so beautifully, when you play the A, all you do is move your thumb, slide it, and nick the octave key. Can you please show them for the camera how you see? Watch right here. See what he does with his thumb? Low A, high E. Low see? A, high E. There you go. Real okay. simple. High E. And keep the thumb covered at all times. Okay, students, let's play along. Here we go. Number 93, clarinet capers. Ready? One, two, ready, and now. <laughs> Beautifully done. Now let's look at 94. Uh, more clarinet capers, okay? 94. Now, the target note in this exercise is a D, which is thumb octave key in all six fingers down. Mr. Martin, could you demonstrate it for our students, please? Now, the same technique here. When you play the low G, you will nick the octave key up to the D, okay? The exercise starts right here. Here we go. More clarinet capers. One, two, Ready and go. <laughs> I cannot get over how beautifully done that is. Okay, students, that's a terrific example of how to do it with beautiful tone and perfect execution. Okay, all together, here we go. 94, one, two, ready, breath, play. <laughs> Beautiful. 
beautiful. Okay, now we go to the next exercise, which is called Muffins Rising, number 95. Now this one, we're going to learn the high F. Okay, it's right here, the high F. Mr. Martin, could you please demonstrate the high F? Okay, now this is going to resemble the uh, familiar children's tune, Hot Cross Buns. Okay, here we go, 95, ready? Mr. Martin will demonstrate it for you. One, two, ready and go. That's it. Perfect. Let's have you play along with Mr. Martin now. Here we go. Ready? 90, 95 uh, muffins rising. One, two. Ready, breath, play. <laughs> exercise on this page is called Hoochie Coochie. Now I think we're just going to have Mr. Martin play it and then you go ahead and work this out on your own at home. Okay now this is entirely in the clarion register. Clarion of course is the musical term for the upper register of the clarinet. The lower register is called the Shalomo register. So these notes are all clarion. D E F E D. D E F F E F D. And then if you know the first two measures, you know the third and fourth measures. Here we go. Let's just listen to Mr. Martin, and then we'll go to the next page. Ready? Uh, three, four, one, two. Again, beautifully played. Now I want to warn you, number 99 is all shallow, but this one teaches you what I think is a very difficult note to play on the clarinet. It's your lowest note, except bass clarinet, you can go a half step lower uh, with an E flat. Let me just make sure we can see it. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay, now the low E. Alright, alright, now you have to look this up on your fingering chart, but it's thumb. All six fingers, pinky on the left top lever there. Mr. Martin, would you please play that note and hold it? Go. All righty. Beautifully played. Now, you don't start at letter A, you start here at letter B. This is the beginning of the exercise. It says play two times, but we'll only play it once, okay? Now, let's listen to Mr. Martin play it at letter B, number 98. Here we go. One, two, ready, and play. Yeah, hear how beautiful that tone is. Okay, that, you know, for a lot of you, that's going to take months, months, years, and years to bring that up. But that's something to really shoot for, that beautiful low sound. I love the low clarinet, and I also love the low bass clarinet. It's just so beautiful. Yeah. Okay, here we go. All students, play along with Mr. Martin. Here we go. 98, start where it says letter B. One, two, ready, and go. Sorry. Sorry, okay. I'm scratching. One, two, ready, and go. All right. 
beautiful. Next exercise, again we uh, revisit the uh, folk song Hot Cross Buns. We teach a new note here, number 99. This is a C. Now, for those of you in most junior high bands, this is going to be your tuning note. Okay, very important note to learn. Okay, this is your C. Would Mr. Martin please go ahead and play us a C? Now, we go back now to our slurring technique when you play the low F, hit your thumb, and you slur up to the C. Here we go, students, listen to Mr. Martin first. Here we go, number 99. One, two, ready and go. <laughs> Beautiful tone, okay? Again, you play the low F and just nudge the octave key with your thumb, keeping the thumb hole closed, okay, as he is showing you, yes. Okay, uh, do that again, please. Let me just reposition the camera. There we go, see it? Let me, let's look at that action again, go. Low F, C. Yeah, see what he's doing? Yeah, that's all it is. Okay, back we go, here we go. Number 99, hot cross buttons, okay? Ready, one, now play along with Mr. Martin. One, two, ready and go. <laughs> Again, beautifully played. We move on to number 100, Rainy Day. Now we take that low E and we turn it into a B natural. Again, I, I feel this is a hard note to play. Okay, there it is. All six fingers of the thumb octave key and then that pinky. Um, again, where you had it for the low E, but you again engage the octave key. Okay, Mr. Martin, would you please play the B for them? played. Now, follow along please. Here's number 100, Rainy Day. All right, here we go. Ready? Listen please. One, two, ready and go. <laughs> sound. Okay, students, let's play along with Mr. Martin, number 100, Rainy Day. Here we go. Ready? One, two, ready and go. <laughs> exercise and like the hoochie coochie we're just going to have Mr. Martin play this one for you number 101 pretzel parade okay now it involves the B and the C here uh, and it goes up to the D but it ends with a couple of shallow notes okay it doesn't follow the pattern of the hoochie coochie where it was all clarion okay all right let's listen to Mr. Martin do number 101 pretzel parade one two ready and go All right. 
Thank you so much. We're going to take a brief break and then we're going to just kind of wrap this up with some concluding thoughts. Okay, so stay tuned. Okay, now that's our demonstration of how to break the register. I wanted to ask Mr. Martin real quick because he knows a lot more about the clarinet than I do. Are there any special tips, Mr. Martin, that you give intermediate level uh, clarinets or even beginning level clarinets who are just learning to break the register? Any special tip that can help them make this to, to do this better? Yes, I do. <clears throat> One thing I encourage players to do, even before you read the notes, you can, you know, get your, give yourself a head start. I would start on C and play down to your G. You can do this without any music and just randomly before rehearsal, just play real slowly. And then when you're comfortable, add the register key. Okay, and then when you're real comfortable, the next step. Remember, you can do this without any sheet music. Then when you're comfortable doing that, you're going to play down to your F and then add the register key. Once you're really comfortable, remember to cover the tone holes very carefully so you can avoid the chirps. And then when you're comfortable doing that, you're going to bring it back up once you have the register key, like such. And just always keep in mind as you start to play over the register key and play the higher notes, really just speed the air up and be careful of the embouchure. Okay? Covering the tone holes are very important. Cover them correctly, take your time, lots of air. As you play higher, increase the air speed. And then, when you're comfortable playing down to the F and up to the C, you can go from the B, I'm sorry, to the low E, up to the B natural, as such. We'll go to the low E first. And it's going to be tricky reaching these uh, pinky keys right here. So give yourself time to develop that. You should spend three to five minutes a day max. Okay, have fun with it. Now, once you're comfortable playing to the low E, you're going to pop that register key and uh, sound to be natural, like such. All right. Once you're comfortable popping that register key and getting that B natural to speak, then you're going to play from there and go up as high as you can, like such. stated, give yourself time, cover the tone holes, lots of air. As you go higher, shoot a little more air in there, more air speed to make the higher notes speak better. Wow. That's no too, music. That's terrific, students. That is absolutely spot on. Um, one thing I find with my intermediate students is when you talk about covering the holes, I find a lot of kids, even kids with medium, large size fingers and not just the ones with small fingers, I always have, I'm calling out, cover your holes, cover your holes, cover your holes. You know, I think another thing is practicing, there's seven holes, the thumb and the six fingers here that you have to cover. And I, I don't think you can practice that enough when you're just starting out, especially when you're learning to break the register. Right. One thing you can do is um, when you start covering the holes on the bottom stack of the instrument or the bottom section, you can even do this in front of a mirror for a minute or two. Yeah, just keep the air moving and just kind of watch your fingers, you know, through the reflection of your mirror. Like I said, three to five minutes a day. If you get tired or frustrated, take a break. Try it again the next day and the next day. It's a process. It could take you weeks to months. It just depends. So give yourself time and be patient. Mr. Martin, thanks very much. Um, very informative and very beautiful sounding playing that I am sure that someday you can uh, sound 
uh, beautiful also on the clarinet, okay? So please take this to heart, work hard, work diligently to learn these high notes and to get this kind of beautiful tone that Mr. Martin has shown you. All right, so Mr. Martin, thank you very much. Thank you. And students, good luck with your practicing. Any questions, ask your band director. Uh, but please make sure that you take this to heart and work very hard to learn your high notes, okay? All right, thanks very much. Bye-bye.